It is a devastate, uh, devastating to see uh, the disaster hit uh, in such a very populous uh, kind of, you know, regions in the country. And uh, it's devastating to see uh, both the casualties and also property losses there, as well as the disruption of the flooding, heavy rainfall and flooding uh, on people's daily lives there. A couple of ways of looking at that. One, I think China has been experienced, comparatively speaking, in terms of summer floods, meaning there is a relatively well-established system like, you know, early warning, uh, emergency response, rescue, rescue efforts, whatever, and even after disaster rebuild, everything like that. But somehow, in front of such extreme weather events, which is breaking the historic records, uh, again, actually, uh, the current system wouldn't be able to accommodate. Uh, that put us in a serious question, you know, thinking seriously about, say, okay, what we've been doing already, what's inadequate. Uh, through the interview earlier, just listening through that, for instance, we all know, actually, the weather forecast already said, you know, send the first level of alarm warning system already, but somehow the message may not have been able to, to reach as many people as possible. When is the first level alert warning, meaning literally schools, workplaces, whatever, need to be shut down, and also most of people need to be stay put, not really going outdoors. And of course, as a part of the early warning system, food supplies need to be stopped, stored or, or as early as possible. Somehow there is a major gulf between the disaster itself and also the, the, how the system works at this moment. And uh, you know, I think the situation probably will be getting better with the water starting to receding at this moment, but somehow the, the you know after disaster rebuild effort probably uh, would take much much longer both from economic losses property losses as well as actually people's casualties so once the cleanup and recovery is finished and you mentioned that china has been working on some flood mitigation efforts for some time what more needs to happen i mean this event seemed to happen so fast so quickly um, that there really wasn't any time to prepare for it so so what more can be done well, I think at different levels there. Short term, you know, the, the reality is we're already living in this sort of more frequent, more severe, more intensive, actually intense extreme weather events. So this is a part of the new normal. Of course, the current system in terms of early warning, uh, which we definitely have the capability already, then how to enforce that as soon as possible. And in the meantime, actually, the emergency response system to so make sure, for instance, the food supplies uh, needs to be taken into consideration as soon as possible, we before, you know, the disasters are hit. And of course, in the meantime, we have to make sure, like, you know, the grid, the electricity, water supply, all those basic essential supplies need to be guaranteed in order to make sure people don't have to walk around going outdoors actually to get those essential services there. But midterm, longer term, I think this is the moment of reflection, uh, even so, Serge, in terms of how we plan our you know, urban planning. And, uh, you know, even using Zhengzhou as an example, uh, three years ago, the city have already started actually to invest heavily in something called the sponge cities, which is paying particular attention actually uh, to adaptation, uh, you know, that resilience effort. But somehow in front of the extreme, you know, historic sort of level of extreme weather events, we just whatever we are planning now seems to be, you know, far, far short of the challenge itself. And more uh, rain is forecast. Uh, Typhoon Sampaka also just hit southern China. We're about out of time, but in about uh, 10, 20 seconds, if you can tell us what you make of the other extreme weather events you're seeing around the world right now. This is a new normal. Unfortunately, we have to live with it. And, uh, you know, from the U.S., you know, Europe and China, all the facts are telling us a really saddening story. We're not ready. We're not prepared to live through it. So immediate actions need to be taken, particularly at the global level.